Good afternoon. I'm happy to have you here, Honorable Commissioner of Finance and Chief Economic Advisor to the Governor of Ogun State, Dapo Okubadejo. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, there's a question that has been um, on my mind for a long time, and that is that Lagos is the economic center of Nigeria. And if you look at IGR and everything, Lagos is always on top. What is Ogun State, which is the state that is next to Lagos in terms of proximity and geography now, and being the gateway state, what is Ogun State doing to tap into all this opportunity and make sure that we go for it neck for neck with Lagos State? Okay, thank you very much for having me. Um, when you compare Lagos and Ogun, from that perspective, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's very difficult to compare them in parallels like that because uh, Lagos used to be the seat of government yes. of Nigeria. Yes. Uh, it was at one point, at, at one point uh, the political capital. It still remains the economic capital of Nigeria. It's the fifth largest economy in Africa with a population of circa 22 million people, yes. with all the attendant infrastructural facilities for trade and investment, seaport, airport, rail, bridges, roads, everything. So it's actually quite difficult to compare Lagos with any other state. But having said that, we're very lucky in Ogun State to be close to Lagos. We are the only neighbor Lagos has. Um, even though we border three other states, uh, Ondo, Oyo, and Oshun states, we also border a West African country, uh, the Republic of Benin. And this particular status gives us access into the bigger West African market. Lagos in itself is getting to some level of uh, saturation. And so Ogun State is taking advantage, albeit in a push way, the opportunities that are coming from Lagos. And so Ogun State is the industrial hub of Nigeria, is the logistics hub, uh, because of the fact that it's a gateway state, you can't go from any from Lagos to any part of the country without passing through Ogo, by air, by sea, by rail, uh, and by road. You know, so we have the biggest road network of federal government within the state. It's a very big state. You know, sixteen thousand seven hundred square kilometers compared to Lagos of uh, three thousand five hundred. You know, but being the industrial hub of Nigeria, there's a lot more we can do. First of all, the two governors of the two states realized the fact that they are conjoined twins, yes. you know, uh, because of their proximity to each other and because of uh, a lot of commonalities that the two states have. So they established what the Lagos Ogun Joint Development Commission. This Lagos Ogun Joint Development Commission was meant to harness and collaborate on, on shared interests on, you know, in the areas of transportation, areas of uh, environment, areas of transportation, security, and other areas as well that the two states can collaborate. And so the formation and the operationalization of that uh, commission is on the way. In addition to that as well, um, by virtue of our land, it is important that we maximize the potential of uh, our land resources. And so <coughs> Ogun State is blessed with three free trade zones, Olokola free trade zone, uh, Ogun Guandong free trade zone, and Kajola Free Trade Zone. And we have several industrial estates by virtue of the fact that uh, the gas pipeline network 
passes through several locations within the state. And in those areas that you have the gas pipeline network, you have industrial estates actually created in those areas, in Shagamo, in Ota, in Agbara, and, and the rest of it. But the problem, which is a bigger problem as a country, is that we're not cost competitive. Mm. There's no industrial strategic planning towards improvement in our non-oil export growth. Because a lot of these companies are operating on their own. There's very little infrastructural uh, support for these companies. And because of the fact that they are providing power to themselves, they're providing security for themselves, they're providing water to themselves, a company can never be competitive, you know, uh, when you compare to global index. And that's why the menace of importation will be very difficult to abate, you know, until some structural changes are made. And one of the things we've done in Ogu State, our vision is to have world-class governance and creating an enabling environment for business through public-private partnership that will lead to economic development of the state and then the individual prosperity of our people. If you look at that vision, there are four pillars within that vision. First is world-class governance, enabling business environment, public-private partnership, economic development, and then prosperity of our people. That vision is underpinned by a mission that says Ogun State wants to be the fastest growing economy in Nigeria. We cannot be the fastest growing economy in Nigeria if we don't make very drastic and strategic structural changes. And one of the things we did was to now have our development pillars, which we refer to as Isheya. Okay. Isheya is our state anthem. And to make it easy for people to understand and assimilate the import of this particular development pillar framework, I for infrastructure, ranging from transport infrastructure to telecoms infrastructure to power infrastructure and the likes, S for social welfare and well-being, health, planning and physical development, environment, uh, housing, anything, all the relevant sectors that will give our people improved prosperity through their well-being is in S. E for education and human capital development. We have the highest number of universities in Nigeria and highest number of tertiary institutions in Nigeria. Our strategy is to leverage on this unique status to create centers of excellence and innovation and knowledge such that we generate a lot of skilled manpower albeit at a relatively lower cost, and prepare them for the industries, you know, and leveraging on technology as well to create a, a, a service-based economy. We're still a blue-collar economy now. It's purely manufacturing-driven. But we need to transform from just being a manufacturer and exporter of raw materials into value addition. And that's one of the reasons we established our economic development clusters okay. um, that would enable us to partner with private sector to provide infrastructure. The government provides the land as our equity in that venture. Private sector provides infrastructure. And then we master plan the place and encourage companies to come and site their businesses and factories there, you know. And then, of course, the private sector would also provide all the infrastructure facilities like power, water, security, waste management, and the likes of it. If we do that and we focus on value addition, it means that all our raw material produce, like cocoa, rubber, cashew, cassava, uh, and the likes, can be processed. And that's why we went into partnership with uh, Afrexin, Africa okay. Export Import Bank, to set up the first quality assurance standard center. Wow. 
in Ogun State, the first, whereby all of these raw material inputs will be examined for quality uh, before export and then also for processing. We need to focus on processing. The only way we can drive our non-oil export growth is value addition. Because if you look at the evaluation of value across the value chain of different agricultural produce, a raw material can be 10% or even much less in value than a finished, a finished good, a finished product. Yeah. So we need to focus as a country, how many of these products do we have the most competitive advantage in? Either in terms of weather, in terms of yield, in terms of acreages, in terms no, of skills, in terms of, you know, all sorts. Is it rubber, cashew, cocoa? Oh, Pick fine. just five yeah. of those and restructure the entire value chain of those products from land acquisition to raw material inputs, seedlings, to fertilizers, to harvest, to storage, and to processing, and then also making it easy for people to export. Yeah. Because a lot of uh, ships, they come in with imported goods mm -hmm. or even freight, but they go back empty. Yeah. You know, our growth, our economic growth and development strategy has to be job-led. Yeah. If we do not have the competitive advantage in a particular product, we can import it as long as we're specialized in value addition. Yes. Because the value capture mm -hmm. for that particular product may be 70%. Mm -hmm. So we should not just be talking about... Uh, um, raw material. Um, I mean, just just planting, planting. If we're not the best at at at, at producing uh, corn, mm -hmm. we can import it. If yeah. our yield is so suboptimally low, yes. let's focus on other aspects of the value the chain. Value chain of the corn. We, yeah. And the advantages we have in processing is that we have huge population. We have yeah. huge market. We have skilled manpower. Yeah. Those are areas that the processing and value addition requires. Because if you do so many acreages of a particular produce and you are not the best at it, you can't, you're not producing at the lowest cost, the yield is abysmally low, you haven't yes. achieved anything. You have not broken it there down. are countries that are biggest exporters of fabric today, but they are not the biggest in terms of cotton. Yeah. They augment their cotton supplies from import, mm -hmm. but they specialize in value addition yeah. To the cotton. So thereby, how many people do you want to engage in farms? Farms have to grow beyond subsistence. Yes. yes. It has to be commercial farming. And commercial farming don't, uh, don't employ so many people. Yes. because it's, So we can uh, engage our yes. people through employment opportunities in processing. Mm. And we're not only just increasing the value capture of those products, we are developing their skills. We're employing a lot of people. So we need to have a rebalance um, in the way we approach, you know, um, economic transformation, right? There has to be teamwork, concerted effort. Fiscal policy must align with monetary policy. You know, the only way we can generate foreign exchange has to be that we're exporting. And the export does not have only to be export of goods. We need to export services. Yeah. We can turn the Jackba syndrome, all right, an into an export earning um, uh, superhouse. Okay? It is clear that all of these people that are Jackba in, uh, they are trained here. Yes. Our education sector is highly subsidized. Yes. You know, but we're not proactively enough. engaging the international... For instance, medical doctors, there's nothing wrong in us engaging with the countries of the Western world to develop a plan that these people will go and then okay. we can get something out of it. They can come back again and all that and all that and all that. Another area in our export promotion, the area of uh, diaspora remittances, we're not generating... Our diaspora remittances far exceeds our foreign direct investments. 
at the last count, it was over $25 billion. But the problem that we're not feeling the impact on our economy is that the money comes in trickles. Mm. There's no aggregate policy to harness this money. We're just talking $25 million, but it comes in trickles. And if you think about it, there are majorly three areas where these monies are meant to come and fund. Healthcare of their families, yes. education of their families, housing for themselves. Yeah. Why can't we set up funds okay. to aggregate these remittances in such a way that diasporas will come and invest in it and we can use it on a large scale to create mortgages hmm. for housing. We can do health insurance yeah. for healthcare. So individual diasporas does not have to be spending Paying this money directly. The they can, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they can buy into these funds, and then the bigger catalytic effect on the economy will be much felt. You know, hmm. we can't continue to do the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Yeah. We have to think outside of the box. You know, we are so blessed in Africa, in Nigeria particularly, because we have a huge market. Nigeria is over 60 something percent of the West African economy. Yes. You know, so, but we're not leveraging on all of that. In addition to that, subnationals, you know, have to be given a strategic interest in the control of their resources. You know, managing an economy of Nigeria's size can be daunting. Yes. But if we can develop true subnationals, hmm. and it will be summation of the whole, you know, summation of the parts of the to parts, make the yeah. whole. So you're talking about true federalism you know? now. Exactly, because one of the things I've also found out is that when you think about what is happening now, yeah. we can even copy from each other. Then there's nothing wrong in copying. Copy, if Lagos State government does something, Ogun State can learn from it. Yeah, it can be a follow who and we, be, and we begin to be more competitive. Yeah. And before you know it, a whole economy of a sub-region can be developed. Yeah. But without the federal government, because of the way the structure is now, nationally, we need federal government incentives. Yeah. And those incentives have to be fair and transparent. Mm. They have to be fair and transparent. They have to be easily accessible by ordinary Nigerian, be it SME, be it corporate, be it multinationals. It should not be the exclusive preserve of just some companies. Because, and those incentives are the incentives that countries have used to grow their economies. Tax holidays, five years, that's taxpayers' money that we have given to you for free just to encourage you to come and invest. You bring your business, yeah. Okay? Preferential uh, foreign exchange allocation, yeah. single digit interest rate, yeah. tax credit scheme. They are all aimed at reducing the cost of production. Yeah. And so, therefore, the regulatory agencies, relevant regulatory agencies, should then ensure that these incentives we have given to companies upfront are available for the benefit of the citizens. You cannot enjoy the tax holidays all, and all these tax benefits, all these, uh, even in, in many cases, the natural resources are given at almost next to nothing. So yeah. you can't enjoy all these, and we're not giving the benefits to the, citizens. to the citizens. So there's a need for some linkages in that mm -hmm. area as well, you know. And until we, we, we are very serious about this, you know, because for me, we are talking about how do we improve our non-oil export. I'm, I mean, we need to develop a robust and plan. practical industrial transformation plan. Yeah. Where is that? Yeah. I haven't seen that. You know? So those are yeah. things that, yeah. that we need to do. And we say we're ready because we want to take full advantage of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement yeah. because we are already the largest industrial hub. Thanks to Business Day, for putting this uh, summit together. Um, you've been at the forefront of not only business education, but also advocates for global best practices in uh, business um, and other such private sector endeavors. Your objectivity, your professionalism,
I think, are crucial at this stage in our economic development. Uh, providing this kind of a platform would also make it easier for our representatives in government uh, to have the opportunity to listen to a robust discussion uh, and uh, ideas and recommendations uh, on how um, the economy of this country can be better. It's, it's not going to be, it's not a one man's job. It's not a one man's job. And like the proverb says, if you want to go far, you go with others. If you want to go fast, you go alone. It's not a one man's job. Everybody will be affected. So creating a forum where you get the benefits and impedes of a very brilliant uh, private sector network and government collaborating together, I think is, is very commendable. And so you guys continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner. It's Thank nice you. to be with you.